Hey, good morning, guys. Okay, it's Tuesday, and today I'm posting some material that I want you to digest. I want you to take some time, you know, 10 minutes or so quietly, and, and watch these videos and, and go to the links. The topic is important. Uh, it's the beginning of the Holocaust, which is the, the murder of 7 million Jewish people during the war. Um, I want to start with why did Hitler hate the Jewish people? It, it's an important question. You'll see this video gives a lot of theories. There's no one reason, uh, but that's important. Secondly, what happened if you were Jewish and you lived in Germany and other countries that, that the Nazis took over? And then third is um, life in the ghettos uh, where, where Jewish people were sent before the concentration camps. So go ahead, digest these, um, but remember you have an assignment that I gave yesterday, and that is due tomorrow, okay? So the form is due tomorrow. Today's stuff is, is important. I want you to learn it, and I think it'll, it'll put some questions in your mind, all right? So um, I'm proud of a lot of you guys that are really doing this, and you're getting your stuff in, and, and it means a lot. This totally sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm with you, but you got to keep learning, and it's important. Okay, so, um, you know, email me, uh, hangouts, all that stuff. I'm around. Okay. It is a commonly known fact that Adolf Hitler used Jewish people as a scapegoat to gain control in Germany and eventually become the Chancellor. He made it his mission to exterminate the Jews through the Holocaust, which resulted in the deaths of millions of innocent people. But what was the root cause of this hatred, and how did it begin? What causes someone to hate a group of people so much that they want to exterminate them from the face of the earth? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions. I'm Charlotte Dobre, and today we are going to answer the question, why did Hitler hate Jewish people. Hitler did not invent the hatred of Jews. Many cultures and societies dating back to the beginning of civilization were both envious and angry at Jewish people. Hitler grew up in Vienna and at the time, the mayor of Vienna was a known anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic literature at the time was stereotyping and portraying Jews in an evil light. They were being represented as disloyal, untrustworthy, and money hungry. An example of this is the Elders of Zion. This document was claimed to be the Jewish plan for world domination and it was widely distributed. Hitler was heavily influenced by this document. Adolf Hitler himself explained that he had no feelings toward Jews before he moved to Vienna in 1908. It is widely known that Hitler was rejected from the Vienna Academy of Fine Arts. As documented in his book Mein Kampf, Hitler was convinced that the panel members who rejected his application were Jews. Another theory is that a Jewish doctor unsuccessfully treated his mother, Clara, when she had breast cancer. Hitler loved two things in life, his mother and the German Reich. Clara died a painful death in 1907. Germany's loss of World War War one was another big trigger. Hitler was brought into the philosophy that Germany was stabbed in the back by the Jews during World War I. Jewish people were extremely involved in the socialist and communist movements that led to revolutions in both Germany and Russia, which were seen as weakening the war effort. Hitler believed socialists were ruining Germany, and Bolshevism would be the downfall of any country. The Social Democrats agreed to an armistice that was later treated as a surrender. The Social Democrats consisted of many Jewish people. Instead of blaming the German army, it was easier to blame the Jews for Germany's catastrophic defeat and the collapse of the monarchy. After the First World War came the Great Depression. Hitler also blamed the depression in Germany on the Jews. Following the First World War and the Treaty of Versailles, Germany and the rest of the world experienced a period of severe economic depression. Jews in Germany were not as affected by the Great Depression because they held a lot of control over the economy at the time. Jews controlled businesses, merchandise, and expert fields. So when the depression hit, they were much better off than the average German. According to Hitler, this was a huge injustice. So basically, he blamed them out of good old-fashioned jealousy. Hitler was, of course, also inspired by the theory that Jews, along with gypsies and Slavs, were biologically inferior to Aryans, the master race. Aryans were regarded by Hitler as a pure race, identified by pale skin, blonde hair, blue eyes, and a tall, slim physique. Hitler believed that the Aryan race was the highest representative of mankind. The Holocaust was Hitler's way of purifying the world of inferior races, so inferior that he did not consider them to be human. In 1920, Hitler announced to the Nazi party, none but those of German blood may be members of the nation. No Jew, therefore, may be a member of the nation. The final solution was a Nazi plan to exterminate the Jews during World War II, so that the Aryans were the only race left. There is another theory, and that theory is that Hitler did not hate Jewish people at all. There is a strong possibility that Hitler used the anti-Semitism that was already present in Europe and exploited it as a political tool. He could have used the public's feelings of distrust towards Jewish people in order to gain their support. He blamed them for all the hardships the Germans went through. As his 
history demonstrates, a scapegoat is a powerful political tool. As explained in this video, Hitler had many reasons for hating Jewish people, but then so did much of the world, and that hatred goes back centuries. The reason for that? Well, that sounds like the topic for another life's biggest questions. I'm Charlotte Dobre for LBQ. Don't forget to like this video, share it with a friend, and subscribe for more answers. With the Nazi rise to power in January 1933, Germany's Jews began suffering from violence, terror, and anti-Jewish legislation. Laws such as the Law for the Restoration of the Professional Civil Service and the Law Against the Overcrowding of German Schools and Universities led to the dismissal of hundreds of doctors, lawyers, bank managers, newspaper editors, film industry professionals, teachers, and professors. In 1935, the treatment of Jews worsened, in part due to pressures from activists and radical party leaders. This radicalization culminated in September at a Nazi party convention in Nuremberg. During the convention, two racist laws were approved and they laid the foundation for further anti-Jewish measures. The Reich Citizenship Law, which determined who would be considered a citizen, entitling them to civil and political rights, took the status away from the Jews. The law for the protection of German blood and German honor prohibited marriages and relations amongst Jews and Germans. In addition, Jews were forbidden to raise the Reich's flag. Many German Jews chose to remain in Germany in the hope that with the legal definition of their status, their condition would not further deteriorate. In practice, the Reich's institutions relied on these laws to further broaden anti-Jewish measures. Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass, was the wave of violent anti-Jewish pogroms on November 9th and 10th of 1938. It took place throughout Germany, annexed Austria, and in areas of Czechoslovakia recently occupied by German troops. Kristallnacht owes its name to the shards of shattered glass from the windows of synagogues, homes, and Jewish-owned businesses that lined German streets in the wake of the pogrom. On November 7, 1938, Ernst von Rath, a German embassy official stationed in Paris, was assassinated by Herschel Grimspan, a 17-year-old Polish Jew living illegally in Paris. Grimspan revengefully shot the diplomat after witnessing the expulsion of not only his parents, but thousands of Jews of Polish citizenship living in the German Reich. Von Rath died on November 9, 1938. The same day, at a meeting of Nazi party leadership, Propaganda Minister Joseph Goebbels, the chief instigator of the Kristallnacht pogroms, suggested that world Jewry had conspired to commit the assassination and ordered that any demonstration while not organized by the Nazi party shall not be hampered. Newspapers reported otherwise. After Goebbels' speech, violence erupted in various parts of the Reich. Paramilitary, or SA, and Hitler Youth Units throughout Germany and its annexed territories destroyed Jewish-owned homes and businesses. Jewish artifacts were confiscated, and many young, healthy Jewish men were arrested and filled local jails. The rioters destroyed 267 synagogues throughout Germany, Austria, and the Sudetenland. Many synagogues burned throughout the night in full view of public and of local firefighters who had received orders to intervene only to prevent flames from spreading to nearby buildings.
SA and Hitler Youth members shattered shop windows of an estimated 7,500 Jewish-owned commercial establishments and looted their wares. Jewish cemeteries became a particular object of desecration in many regions. Mobs of SA men roamed the streets, attacking Jews in their houses and forcing Jews they encountered to perform acts of public humiliation. Kristallnacht claimed the lives of at least 91 Jews. As the pogrom spread, units of the SS and Gestapo, the secret state police, arrested up to 30,000 Jewish males and transferred most of them from local prisons to Dachau and Buchenwald, as well as other concentration camps. In the immediate aftermath of the pogrom, measures were introduced to eliminate Jews and perceived Jewish influence from the German economic sphere. The German government announced that the Jews were to blame for the pogrom imposing a fine of 400 million U.S. dollars on the German Jewish community. German education officials expelled Jewish children still attending German schools. The German government announced laws that enforced Aryanization policy, the transfer of Jewish-owned enterprises and property to the Aryan ownership. The events of Kristallnacht represented one of the most important turning points in Nazi anti-Semitic policy. The Nazi regime moved eventually towards policies of forced immigration and finally toward the realization of a Germany free of Jews by deportation of the Jewish population to the East. It is important to understand and remember these events. It is also important to honor those that lived and died during this destructive part of history. It's probably most critical that we teach the lessons so that it may never happen again.